So please put your hands together and welcome to the stage, Seth Gilliam and Evelyn Kinney! C'est le micro vert, s'il te plaît. Merci. Uh, bienvenue, welcome to the stage. I'm assuming, and it's fine if you can't, but I'm assuming you don't speak French. No. No. That's fine. Sorry. I'll do a little bit of translating as we speak, so apologies if the rhythm is a little bit weird during the conversation. Um, thank you for being here. I appreciate it. Um, I'm going to go straight into some weird questions. Okay. Uh, so, first question to you, Seth. Um, the father is going through quite a lot of complex challenges. Right? There's a, I wrote it down better this morning, but essentially my, my, my point is, does the father feel punished by God for being in a world that feels so hellish, or does he feel as though God has given him that opportunity because it means that he is capable of handling such pressure? I would lean more towards the latter. I would think as far as punishment goes, that uh, Father Gabriel punishes himself. And I don't believe he believes it's coming from God. I believe he thinks he failed God, and so he punishes himself. And then God, believing in him, gives him another opportunity to make things right. Okay, so he feels as though he's, he's, he's punishing himself. Although, what kind of sins has Father Gabriel committed? Well, the, the biggest sin was not uh, letting in his, uh, using his church as a safe space during uh, the fall of the society, when he locked out all of his, his congregation, um, his flock, as it were. I think that is something that it takes him years to forgive himself for. And if I'm correct, you are yourself an ordained minister? Yes, of course. No, I'm not an ordained minister. Are you not? No. No. Be I'm a like, dude. I'm like, I'm a black guy from New York, you know what I mean? So I did a little bit of research, I found a little bit of research on the internet. Et on m'a dit qu'il était aussi un, un, un prêtre, un curé. Uh, apparemment, il n'est pas. Uh, my apologies. I, just pretend. The, the, pretend. the show is just pretend. Oh, acting! Yes, yes, yes. It's oh, acting! Uh, my apologies. So I, I, I did a little bit of research, and uh, it said that you, you were like a full-on priest as well. Yeah, no. So you don't go for methods. You're not method. I don't know. I, I, I studied the method. I don't apply it um, in my professional life. <laughs> well, that's good to know because I have seen The Wire. And <laughs> uh, that, moving on to apologies for that, but it's the internet. I'm uh, misinformation everywhere. Beth, hello. Um, oh. No, it's not Beth. Beth is your character. God, I'm, that's all right. I'm <laughs> in my mind. Um, Beth is quite a shy character, but, but grows into her own. And I was wondering, how do you think Beth would be if she became the leader of the group? How would she evolve into that, that role? Oh my gosh, if Beth was the leader? I think that'd be awesome. Yeah, I mean, I could see how if she had survived and needed to continue to survive in the world, that she would have continue to, um, you know, figure out what she needed to do to survive and grow stronger and I think she had a lot of people like her sister and uh, Daryl and Rick and everyone like on her side. So, um, yeah, I don't know. How does playing uh, a show that confronts you with human nature at its best and at its worst influence the way you perceive your own reality and your interactions with people. La question en fait c'est le fait que dans le show il y a tellement de, de mal et du bien, comment est-ce que ils, ils essayent de vivre euh, cette réalité 
dans notre réalité en fait. Comment est-ce qu'on peut être confronté à ça et pas changer psychologiquement Like how does it not change you psychologically I, I think it's helped me to have a little more compassion for people, um, uh, for their feelings, for their shortcomings. I think where, as before I started working on the show, I was probably a little more impatient with people until I started working on the role of Father Gabriel. Um, and, you know, as an actor, I find that I try to find something in each character that I play that I can love so that I can best represent them. Regardless of what the audience is seeing, you have to love something about your character. And it was one of the things that I loved about Father Gabriel was his compassion. Once he realized that, that he had lost it and tried to make up for it. So it's something that I've, that I've kind of been a little bit more aware of in my own daily dealings. Something about um, working on a show that's about the end of the world and then looking at, you know, I, I get into some of the news and the TikTok, um, what is it called? And you just keep scrolling, doom scrolling and things like that. I think like looking around at the, the world and sort of um, looking at structures that we have in place and um, that they could collapse at any moment. <laughs> my mind. I also think just when you're working on a show, even when in ways you're not aware of it, um, it enters into other parts of your life. Like I've definitely had dreams now about zombies. Um, also just things that my characters go through end up in songs and poems that I write. Even if when I'm writing it, I'm not aware. Um, so yeah, I think, um, I think it definitely follows out with me into the world in some way. Sure. Il y a des questions du public Are there any questions in the public Yes, sir. En français, s'il vous plaît, hein, je traduis. Can I, can I do it in English That would be actually great. We, we have a question about the relations of Beth and Daryl. Actually, my wife and I are like in disagreement about... I, I was thinking it was going to like a romantic relationship 